Today, I'm talking all about protein overload, and I'm gonna share why protein overload is not what you think it is. And then I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks to get over the symptoms of protein overload. Hi, I'm Delilah from The Holistic Enchilada, and on my channel, I share tips, tricks, and resources to help anyone embrace their curls and keep things simple. You can follow me along on social media at Holistic Enchilada. I share lots of tutorials and tips and tricks on my social media accounts, as well as on my blog, holisticenchilada.com, where there are tons more, lots of in-depth blog posts, tutorials, and freebies, downloads, things that can help you on your curly hair journey. So what is protein overload really? It's actually just a moisture deficiency, meaning that your hair doesn't have enough moisture in it. So protein overload happens when you are focusing on giving your hair a lot of protein, but you are lacking in the moisture area. So you're focusing on products that have tons of protein, but they don't have enough moisture to maintain that balance. So now you enter a moisture deficiency, a lack of moisture state. And so what people call protein overload is really just moisture deficiency. I'm going to refer to it both ways back and forth. Protein overload has just become the word for it. So even though that's not really what it is, people are using this phrase. And so I'm just going to use it for simplicity, but do know it is a moisture deficiency. It is not an overload of protein. So the symptoms of not having enough moisture are the same symptoms as too much protein. It's not that your hair has absorbed too much protein, it's that you haven't given it enough moisture to balance everything out. So it's that protein moisture balance. Now, if you are looking for more basic information about proteins, protein treatments, how to identify proteins in products, when to do a treatment, that kind of stuff, then you wanna check out this video up here that's all about protein treatments and that's where it's a little more basic and I talk more about that. This video is really just focusing on protein overload so you should know what proteins are, what protein treatments are, and all that. Now the problem is if you are using protein-rich products or doing a lot of protein treatments and your hair needs more moisture than you're giving it, that's where you get these symptoms of protein overload, where your hair can be dry, brittle, it starts to break, it gets frizzy, sometimes it's fluffy, sometimes it can even feel really soft. So the same symptoms as too much moisture can be as if you were giving your hair too much protein. So it's really just an imbalance. When your hair is not balanced, you're going to see all of these issues of breaking, brittleness, dryness, fluffy, frizz, and usually it's that you're not giving your hair the right protein moisture balance, you're not giving it enough moisture. Now, some ways, or what I like to recommend so people don't get into this problem of getting protein overload in their hair and having to go back is don't do a lot of protein treatments and don't use too much protein in your routine. So basically, you should everyone should have protein in their routine. Some, not a lot. All hair products have protein in them for the most part. There are a couple that don't because our hair is made of protein, it's made up of keratin and it needs it. What protein does is, it, is that it fills the gaps in the cuticle, so the cuticle is like the outside of the hair strand, and as it gets damaged from so many different things like the sun, the environment, um, heat damage, color, just brushing, just everyday regular damage, it creates like holes and gaps and the cuticle gets damaged. And so protein helps to fill in these gaps and make the hair stronger temporarily it's not like a permanent thing so it will last on the hair for a certain amount of time and then you would need to add more protein to replace that again so the trick is not overdoing it and like i said i recommend that everyone use protein in your routine but i do not recommend that if you if you're struggling with your hair and you do a protein treatment and it looks fantastic and you love the way it feels that you go and you do one again next time no that's where people make the mistake they have one good wash day or two where they use a lot of protein and they think this is the solution my hair needs a lot of protein no that's how you get into protein overload you need to keep things balanced so a protein treatment wait a couple of weeks before you do it again um, add a little bit of protein into your products your leave-in conditioner your gel but you shouldn't have like super protein rich shampoo conditioner leave-in gel and do protein treatments just that's just way too much those products have a lot of protein, but they don't have a lot of moisture. And so you're giving your hair less moisture over and over and over and over. And some hair types do handle that well. Hair types that don't need a lot of moisture, which is pretty rare for curly hair. 
Um, my hair is one of those hair types. I don't need a lot of moisture, so I can do the protein overboard and my hair won't react. I won't go into protein overload as other people would. But most people do not or, or cannot tolerate not having moisture in their hair for an extended period of time. So you just have to be sensible and uh, everything in moderation, basically, like they say. So I would time your treatments if you are doing protein treatments. I don't actually think that people generally need protein treatments unless your hair is really damaged or if your hair is the type that just doesn't do well with moisture overall. And typically this is like really fine hair, hair that's very easily weighed down. Um, doesn't like a lot of moisture they can go a little heavier on the protein in their routines but everybody else needs to really calm down and keep it sensible like i said a couple of your products with some proteins in it and protein treatment maybe once a month if you need it um, the more damaged your hair is the more protein your hair will need but you also need to give it moisture so like i said you can't do only protein you've got to do both so you want to look for protein rich products that also have moisture in them so like deep conditioners with a lot of protein leave-in conditioners with protein gels that have protein and a moisturizer in them otherwise you're left with that dry brittle feeling if it's if the product let's say for example a gel um it's got like aloe it's got a couple of humectants maybe herbal extracts there's no oils there's no butters not a lot of moisture in there and then it's got a couple of proteins that product can dry out most people's hair it should be balanced with at least an oil in there something to balance out the formulation so that you've got some protein and some moisture and your hair is happy now i talked earlier about how the cuticle being damaged and having like those gaps in it is where protein is beneficial in your routine so this is going to be the case for very damaged hair, for high porosity hair that has the cuticle pretty open. It's porous and fine hair for the most part. They are going to be the hair types that tolerate most proteins and more protein. If you've got low porosity hair, which is hair that is not very porous, it's difficult to absorb stuff, very healthy cuticle, your hair is no damage, then you're not gonna tolerate as much protein as others because your hair doesn't need it and it needs a little more moisture. Now there are like small and large proteins and generally speaking, smaller proteins are easier absorbed by all hair types, especially the ones that struggle a little bit with that like low porosity, coarse hair. And the larger proteins would be tolerated well by people who have high porosity hair. The smaller proteins are gonna be things that are hydrolyzed or amino acids, keratin or collagen. Those are the ones you wanna look for for the smaller proteins that are pretty well tolerated across the board by all hair types. Now, let's go into signs of protein overload, aka moisture deficiency. How do you know that that's what's going on with your hair? Here are, the couple, here are a couple of signs that you may have. First off is low elasticity. So if you take a strand of hair and you stretch it, it should stretch to about 50% before it goes back to its original length. Um, if it breaks right away, then you know that you don't have enough moisture. If it stretches a lot more than that, then you've got a little too much moisture and you can cut back on the moisture a little bit. But if it breaks very quickly before it reaches that 50% range, then you know that you need to add some moisture into your routine. Second is if your hair feels dry. But there are other reasons your hair can feel dry, but pretty much your hair feels dry, you need to add moisture into your hair. Um, if your hair is not shiny, this is another sign that your hair needs more moisture. If your hair is breaking easily, so you're losing like clumps of hair when you're detangling, when you're brushing, a lot more hair is coming out. That's a sign that your hair is brittle and dry and that it needs more moisture to improve its elasticity. And frizz, one of the many causes of frizz is lack of moisture. So that's a big one that a lot of people struggle with. And that right protein moisture balance is a little tricky to achieve, but you definitely need to add in moisture if you're seeing frizz along with some of these other symptoms so what do you do if this is you you're having these symptoms you think that you've overdone it with the protein um, you're experiencing some of these symptoms and you've got moisture deficient moisture deficiency so the first thing I always suggest whenever anybody's hair is acting up is to do a good clarifying cleanse now this is a little bit controversial and people argue with me sometimes especially on social media but talk to a hair stylist talk to hair scientists they all say the same thing to actually clarify your hair and remove product buildup, not just environmental buildup, but product buildup, you need a sulfate or olefin sulfonate 
or a combination of numerous cleansers in one. The easiest way to find that is just look for a shampoo that has sulfate or olefin sulfonate. There are plenty of Curly Girl approved shampoos with olefin sulfonate in them. Off the top of my head, I can tell you Kinky Curly Come Clean, Mop Top Detox, Malibu Sea Undo Goo, that's probably the best. And if you have hard water, the Malibu Sea Hard Water Wellness is really good because it's also chelating to remove mineral buildup. So um, Ion Shampoo, I think from Sally's is where they sell that one. So those are a couple. And if you wanna go really cheap, Suave Daily Clarifying. That's a sulfate shampoo, it's not Curly Girl approved, but I do recommend that people clarify on a regular basis anyway. And if you're experiencing these symptoms, that's your first step is to clarify, strip your hair, start from like a fresh clean slate. Then the next thing is you're going to up the moisture in your routine. So you would look at your product lineup and look at the ingredients list and see if you're maybe just have products that don't have enough moisture. They've got a lot of proteins in them, but they don't have a lot of moisture in them. Moisturizing ingredients are things like humectants, like aloe, glycerin, honey. I can't think of other humectants off the top of my head right now. As well as oils, butters, water is moisturizing as well. Anything that is an herbal emulsion, herbal extract, those are gonna be very lightly moisturizing. So you're looking for those types of ingredients in addition to having a protein or a few proteins in the product. So scan the ingredients list of your product. You shouldn't have multiple proteins in all of your products. You can have like one protein in each one, but if you've got like three or four in your leave-in, your conditioner and your gel and your mousse, that's too much. So cut back, pull out those products that are really heavy on the protein and light on the moisture, set them aside for now, and add in more moisture into your routine. So more moisturizing products, things like leave-ins and curl creams that you still want protein, but you don't want a lot of it. So they're gonna be moisturizing. You can add in deep conditioning more often. Lay off the protein treatments, just set that aside for now. You don't need them. Focus on moisturizing deep conditioners. You wanna do them pretty often, like once a week, until you see that your hair starts to balance out and you can cut down and do it less often. And in the future, when you do use something that is protein heavy, like a protein treatment, balance it out with something moisturizing. If you do a protein treatment, do a deep conditioner after, okay? So that will help you maintain your protein moisture balance to avoid getting to that place where you've got a moisture deficiency going on because you're not giving your hair enough moisture. And then like I said, just choose the right products moving forward. Maintain that balance. Don't go strictly in one direction. Oh, I just need protein. I'm gonna focus on protein. Oh, I just need moisture. That's where things go wrong. Your hair needs both of them. You need to balance the both of them. You don't want too much of one and not the other. Now let me give you a tip about reading ingredients labels because I talked about how you should look at them and look for specific ingredients. I'm gonna link to a blog post below and I linked to earlier that YouTube video that talks about proteins, but in this post, it lists specific protein ingredients to look for. So you can see if you're confused and you're not sure what to look for. But when you're looking at an ingredients list, let me grab a product here. Let's say I've got this dry shampoo. So the ingredients list is pretty short. This one's right here. Um, the first ingredient in the list is the ingredient that has the highest concentration in the product. So this one is isobutane. So that tells me that in this container, there is more isobutane than anything else. The last ingredient in here is fragrance, and that tells me that that's the smallest concentration. So they're the least amount of all the ingredients, the fragrance is the least. So it's an order of concentration. The first five ingredients make up the bulk of your product. So you want to look at the first five ingredients when you're looking for moisture and protein, and make sure that it's not an overload of one or the other, depending on what your hair needs. Some hair actually needs tons of moisture. So for some people, yeah, you do wanna see a bunch of oils and butters at the top. But that's how you can identify if something is protein heavy. If it's got two or three proteins in the first five ingredients, that's a protein heavy product. And unless it's bombarded with 20 moisturizing ingredients underneath that, it's not going to be balanced. So that's what you're looking for when you are checking an ingredients label to see what is actually in a product, how much protein it has, how much moisture it has. The closer the ingredient is to the top, the beginning of the list, the more of that ingredient that is in the product. Okay, now I did a ton of research for this video. I checked out the Sciency Hair blog, I watched webinars, and I've actually taken training 
with a curly hair company to become a curly hair consultant where I learned like the actual science of hair, the makeup of hair and how ingredients and different things interact with the hair. So I pulled from all of these different areas to figure out what the deal was with protein overload and that's how I came up with this information that I'm sharing with you. None of this is new information. I'm just borrowing from other places and sharing with you what I have found. I think that protein overload is something that has kind of been twisted and people have run with it and so there's this misconception that your hair can absorb too much protein and that protein can be a bad thing for your hair when in reality what you should be focusing on is moisture. So it's not that complicated. <laughs> It's just that people need to maintain balance. That's really all it is. This is why I do not recommend protein treatments in general because you focus too much on one specific thing and then the balance goes away. So that's why I like to say have a routine that has protein, a little bit of protein in all your products and also moisture and you should never have to pay attention to this. Like this shouldn't even be something that you would need to be researching. Hopefully that's the case. All right, so I hope that I broke that down for you in a way that you were able to understand and that made sense. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, experiences with protein and moisture and all that. Just post them in the comments and I will get back to you. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you in the next video.